Hello, everyone. My name is Helena Brill. I'm an account executive here at Typhoon, and thank you so much for joining us for today's call, our webinar. I am featuring Strive, and I will introduce your our panelists to you guys in just a couple of minutes. I'm going to give people two minutes to get on the call, and we'll get started shortly. Hello everyone, again, my name is Helena Brill and I'm an account executive here at Typhoon and I again want to thank everyone for joining us for today's Partner Spotlight webinar. Today we are featuring our partners and friends from Strive and I'm really excited for you guys to learn about them today. And I brought along with me today, Andrew Toll, VP of Business Development and also Lauren Patrick, Director of Marketing. Before I pass it off to them, a couple of housekeeping things. Everyone is on mute and we have the chat window open. So if you have any questions throughout today's uh, webinar, please post those in there. And at the end of the webinar, we will get to your, if we have time permits, we will get to your questions. And in the meantime, I'm gonna pass this off to Andrew and Lauren. Lauren, are you able to get in okay? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Okay, well, I'm going to pass it off to you and Andrew to, to take over and show us your guys' presentation today. Excellent. Thank you so much, Helena, for joining us. Uh, certainly appreciate it. Um, are you going to be running the slides real quick, or did you want me to? I'm trying to figure out to make sure that I'm able to share my screen, including the presentation as well as the demo. Sure. If you uh, if you can do your own if you can do your own slides, the, great. Um, and I can pull them up if you want me to. Let me. I can change you over. I just didn't know who to put as presenter. You or Lauren? Uh, please make me presenter, and I'll take it from there. Perfect. Okay, you are presenter now. Standing. There we go. I'm going to check and make sure. Can you see my screen, Helena? Yes, we can. Fantastic. I'm going to full screen mode. And thank you so much for the time today. Certainly appreciate it. Um, the intention of the call for today is really for Strive to talk a little bit more about our solution as it pertains to increasing card usage and inspiring loyalty with particular members of and uh, card holders, uh, be that from a debit or credit card perspective. So as we go through the presentation today, really what we're focusing in and the Strive organization is based out of Seattle, Washington. Uh, Lauren Patrick, who's joined me on the call, is our VP of Marketing. I run business development for the organization, and we're pleased to have the chance to join you today. Um, as we've mentioned, our sole focus is really how to enable a financial institution to get their cards, either credit or debit, situated on more merchant sites, thereby directly increasing transaction volume. The way in which that we're specifically viewing has how to do that is every card we view either again debit or credit that is issued or reissued is an opportunity to establish what we call lasting top of wallet status or essentially the default payment methodology for that card to be placed as the regular recurring subscription payment for a Walmart, a Hulu, a Netflix or especially for regular shopping sites such as Amazon or Best Buy placed as the default method for anything that might be related to curbside pickup or otherwise. 
The challenge associated with updating cards is that this is simply put a nightmare for cardholders, which leads to a whole variety of different issues that includes lessened card use due to the fact that it is a hassle to update cards on file. This lost top of wallet status when John or Jane Doe, your cardholders, might begin using other cards in their wallet, other competitive cards, simply because they're there, they're working, or it just happens to be convenient for them at the time. When any of these cases actually come to be, that is an immediate and direct impact of lost interest income and interchange revenue and could result in John or Jane Doe not wanting to do business with your particular institution in the future. So at Strive, we like to ask the simple question, how can we enable you to have your card become top of wallet, thereby increasing transaction volume? We suggest utilizing our automatic card updating solution to do this. When people utilize and deploy the Strive solution, that's gonna enable them to do three things in particular. Number one, for those cards that are out there, your branded debit or credit cards, let's keep them in circulation. But not only keep them in circulation, let's see how we can enable them to become the preferred card on file at a whole host of different merchant sites. Not just at one site, or not just for the occasional out of wallet or purse use, but let's have them up and running on five, 10, 15, or 20 different sites. And we'll talk later on during the presentation as to the impactful event that that will have on a regular basis from a revenue increase perspective for you and the financial institution. When we are able to keep these cards in circulation and be the preferred card on file, we will have a direct impact on increasing cardholder loyalty and engagement across the board. I'm going to switch over to the demo, but we're going to do that at the very end. I'm asking for Lauren to please go ahead and put this link into the actual chat of our webinar today so that folks can not only have that for utilization or testing during the course of our talk today, because it is a live, non bin protected actual demonstration, but I'm going to do that at the very end to give some context in terms of how we are going about getting cards updated. So Strive offers two different products, our Card Saver platform, and on top of that, we have built our own card updater application. The demonstration that I'll be providing at the end of our discussion today is specifically on our card updater application, which is a Strive hosted, able to be embedded in your particular website, fully branded to your particular issuing card entity experience. The cool thing associated with Card Updater is there is no developmental resources that are needed. It is ready to go in days and can support both your consumer as well as your business platform and a variety of different types of card types as well. If there's a signature series, a VIP series, you want to have it to a, a specific or target the um, a campaign to dormant cards, for instance, all of those are relevant across the board. Our card saver platform is essentially the little engine that could. It's accessed through our RESTful card saver API, and any of your digital applications can integrate with our card saver platform APIs. It is going to enable your particular financial institution to have a variety of mechanisms by which you can control the user experience, and you can utilize whatever data retention or PCI or PII policies or regulatory controls that you need to in terms of making sure that that experience is not only able to get done what you needed to get done, but also enabling John and Jane Doe to get their cards up and running on a host of different sites. The Card Saver platform can typically be implemented and deployed in about four to six weeks. On the other hand, the Card Updater application, which again is built off of the Card Saver technology is fully functional and powered by Card Saver. It provides this exclusive vanity URL that can be embedded in any of your particular communication channels, whether that's through mobile or online banking, through regular social media, blog posts, or any other type of digital communication or engagement that you may be having with John or Jane Doe as your members. The unique thing, again, with Card Updater, there is no development team needed in order to get this up and running. The financial institution sends us their brandable assets 
sends us their listing of BIN so that we can make sure that it's BIN protected to only allow your financial institution debit and credit cards to be utilized. And that's it. We'll take care of providing a shared or dedicated instance hosted by Strive. There is no data retention on the card updater application and we can have an instance ready to go in literally two to three business days of the card updater application. Some key differences associated between card updater and card saver, we host both of them. The card updater technology does not persist any PII or PCI data, whereas for card saver, it is able to be issuer controlled. If for instance, you wanted to maintain and have not only the card information, but the site issued credentials, for instance, for Walmart or Amazon, that the user with their permission provides to you and you retain those, you may do so with Card Saver. The experience is again fully controlled with Card Saver by the financial institution and with Card Updater, as you will see in the demonstration, it is branding only. Uh, so we'll provide that for you ready to go to present the uh, technology to your cardholders. A matter of business days for Card Updater, typically four to six weeks for the API to be fully integrated. Both of the solutions are fully PCI DSS AOC certified. So we check off that box, which we know is something that's very important. And we could discuss pricing to you based specifically upon the volume of cards as we are a success-based placement of card fee uh, a business model associated with the technology. So Strive really comes into play where you need it the most and really specific to card usage, whether it's on the initial acquisition or card issuance for the particular customer, all the way through to when a card may be potentially deactivated. Any of those particular areas are where the Strive technology can enable a financial institution to either gain or regain that top of wallet status with your particular customers. And as we look at one of the most powerful utilizations of the Strive technology, especially when we partner it with a specific number of use cases, we have a number of customers. We're up to three dozen or so credit unions and financial institutions that are currently utilizing the technology, and they are utilizing it for a host of different issues. In one case, we have folks that are doing competitive card switching offers. For instance, they have a number of other financial institutions right in their backyard, and we are providing them a means with which to provide their card as being placed as top wallet, for instance, with an Amazon Prime Day type promotion, and utilize that as a means with which to get their cards placed as the default payment on Amazon. We'll talk a little bit more about how important that is a little in a few slides. In another case, one of the biggest costs in card operations is really about dormant or underutilized cards. John or Jane Doe becomes a member, they get their first card, they're ready to go, but then that card immediately goes into a drawer to disappear and not be utilized, potentially forever. So it's not a source of engagement and it's not a source of potential revenue for your particular institution. Providing John or Jane Doe, on the other hand, when they first get their card, an immediate and easy way to engage with them and welcome them not only with a card, but a simplified tool that enables them to put that card on one, three, five, 15 different sites is always a great way to make sure that you're getting them digitally engaged. And then of course, across the board, when cards are getting reissued or there might be a portfolio swap or flip over, those are excellent instances with where the technology can be specifically brought to bear. And speaking of trying to get digitally engaged with your particular customers, we have a couple of different mechanisms that our team has developed, including Top Wallet Tools. Top Wallet Tools is specifically a number of marketing assets and strategies that our team has developed. Think of it as best case strategies of getting in front of John and Jane Doe to get them to not only engage with you, but to make sure that we are enhancing the online adoption and overall card use of your card, not someone else's card, but your specific branded card, and have John or Jane use that as their primary default payment methodology. We have this content that we provide in Top Wallet Tools that is as specific as buck slips that can be mailed to social media and blog posts, letters to the president, short explainer videos, and a host of other content that can be utilized as well. 
In conjunction with Top Wallet tools, we have Top Wallet rewards, which is tying in with your particular real-time reward incentivization program that you may or may not have, whether that's cash back, whether that's points, whether that's some other means with which that you are engaging with and trying to encourage John or Jane to use your cards, but we can tie in directly to that and make sure that we're continuing to generate very strong brand loyalty between you as the particular financial institution and John or Jane utilizing their debit or credit cards across the board. When we're able to do that, we know specifically that that will increase revenue for becoming the default payment methodology or having that top of wallet placement for a number of online mer uh, merchants and or bellers. A short diagram in terms of how this works with the actual incentive being offered with top wallet tools to the card being placed with card saver or card updater, and that reward being placed after the card is placed as the top of wallet, either at, for instance, a Hulu, a Netflix, or a Walmart, or an Amazon. And then that reward remittance going straight and away over to John or Jane Doe is really depicted in this particular slide. So before I talk a little bit on the actual numbers and the uh, ROI associated with the technology, let's talk about some of those sites that, and this is uh, data that is from our live customers, um, current utilization. One of the most important components here is recognizing the fact that uh, uh, many folks view Amazon.com and especially over the last year with the challenges of the uh, pandemic, um, folks are shopping, simply put, many, many more times than they may have previously. They are going to a variety of different sites to either have items delivered to them, to have them uh, for curbside pickup. And Amazon, of course, is one of those that uh, reigns as kind of the crown jewel associated with that. The unique thing associated with where we are associated with uh, getting the cards up and listed on file is Amazon is currently almost 25% of the total updates that our cardholders are uh, updating as top of wallet. Why is that important? Well, specifically, we know with Amazon that 82% of US Amazon customers are actually Prime members. And these members are spending roughly $1,400 annually. When you plug in your particular interchange rate associated with that annual spend, you can see that just having John or Jane have their primary card placed as top of wallet will generate. $30 of interchange revenue alone has an impact to having that one card placed at amazon.com. When you look at the fee, roughly a dollar per card per site placed, the ROI associated with paying a dollar to make 30 is very, very clear. And let's take that and expand that out across an entire portfolio and say that we've got 25,000 cards that could be updated at five different sites, not just Amazon, but at an Amazon, a Walmart, a Hulu, a Netflix. And let's look at taking an $82 average order value and four transactions a year. Of course, subscription sites will be closer to 12 transactions a year, but let's just take as an aggregate average, $82 for the value of the transaction and four transactions a year. When we are able to make that happen and get 25,000 cards of your cards that are updated at five sites, that's going to represent $41 million of transaction volume opportunity, almost a half million of interchange, and $354,000 of interest revenue. And when we plug in the cost of getting those 125,000 online merchants updated of roughly $125,000, where you're able to generate $846,000 of revenue from that, the ROI of 6.77 is extremely impactful, and it's one of the reasons why we are continuing to see broad-scale interest and adoption of the Strive card updater technology. So when we look at, the, again, the top wallet rewards uh, component associated with what we've got, and when we've got, when we get an Amazon card that is placed and situated as the top of wallet, we get... Um, for instance, Acme Bank, to get that placed up and situated, we're going to have the opportunity to enable that particular John or Jane Doe card placement to receive back as uh, points, as cash back, or some other means. They're going to have the capability of, again, recognizing and getting that reward for that successful card placement. 
So as we summarize a little bit about the technology, and before I jump, uh, jump over to the demo, Thrive Views Ourselves is the only solution that updates default payment methodologies that comprehensively benefits not only card issuers, merchants, and cardholders, but does it in a variety of ways to provide an increase in transaction volume, the ability for the financial institution to gain more of a share of wallet, get insight specific to where cards are being used, and from a customer service perspective, there is that enhanced satisfaction of knowing that their card, where it's placed, how it's being placed, and the benefits of having it placed with your particular financial institution, which is garner a, going to garner additional loyalty and have a dramatic impact on customer service as well. So in essence, Strive is providing frictionless card updating experiences that are designed to directly increase card utilization that inspire loyalty across the board. And with that, I'm going to switch over and make sure that I will ask Helena, are you able to see my screen where I have now gone over to my Google Chrome browser and I have Acme Bank as the live demo site? I can see it. You are good. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to take everybody through a quick demonstration. Uh, again, this is our card updater technology. You'll notice that everything is branded to Acme Bank. You insert in your particular financial institution and the look and feel of this can be fully branded again, of course, with your look, feel, color, style guide, everything else across the board. And there are three key steps associated with the demonstration. What we're going to do is I'm going to select sites in the first step. Once I've selected those sites in the second step, I'm going to input in my card and billing information. And as the third and final step, I'll add in my credentials to those particular sites and the technology will handle everything from there. So first and foremost, and by the way, this can be embedded in your website. You'll notice I'm switching over um, to a live implementation with Dear Employees Credit Unions, one of our first launch customers. They renamed the technology to DECU Retailer Wallet. And not only did they do that, but they've embedded it into their home uh, page of their website so it's available for their members to quickly and immediately utilize. But from the demonstration perspective, I could try and log in to Deer, or in this case, I've also brought up Affinity, uh, Affinity Federal Credit Union, another customer of ours who has, uh, um, is utilizing the technology. But in those, case, in those cases, they are both then protected. Deer only allows Deer cards. Affinity only allows Affinity cards to be updated. The demo here is designed to be utilized by any of you to update any particular cards, and I'll show that right now. So we've got about 60 to 70 different sites. I'll do a slow scroll through here to demonstrate some of these. We can provide a merchant list to anybody that's interested relative to those sites that we cover. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna go ahead and do some streaming and some purchasing today. So I'll select Netflix and Walmart. I could have searched for them via this means or used the alpha scroll bar here on the right-hand side as well. But for the sake of simplicity, I'll pick Netflix and Walmart. I hit continue, Oops, let me go back. I had actually opened that up previously. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Netflix and Walmart and hit continue. That's gonna take me to the second part of the actual uh, process where it's going to ask me to input in my billing and actual card information. Like a lot of folks, I utilize autofill and the technology fully supports both password managers as well as autofill. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. This is my Chase Visa card. It is my actual information that's associated with this. And I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. That completes the second of the three steps associated with the process. It's going to now ask me to enter in my username and password for both Walmart as well as Netflix. And with that, That is the entire process from start to finish. What I've just done is the three steps associated with updating a card on file. I have selected Walmart, 
I have selected Netflix. I, as Andrew told, have instructed the technology or the site in this case to go ahead and go out um, and I've provided my card information, my billing information, um, and all of the particulars associated with the site credentials for both Walmart and for Netflix. Both of these now are being contacted. The technology is going out. If there is a card that is there, it is going to replace that existing card with this card that has been given specific direction by me to be updated as the default payment methodology for both Walmart and for Netflix. You'll see that literally in less than a minute, Walmart's situated, Netflix will be doing the same, and that from start to finish are the three steps associated with taking a couple of minutes of your user's time, having them select sites, input in their card and billing information, provide the login information for those particular sites, and that's it. Step one, two, three, and then it's a simple three-step process to get the cards up, running, and situated and being placed as top wallet across the board. Now, I will stop there and see what questions that we may have pertinent to the technology or anything on the demonstration side as well. Great. Thank you, Andrew, for that presentation. That was great. Um, just a reminder to everybody, we are in, in listen-only mode. If you have any questions, please put those in the uh, chat window and we will get to your questions. I just want to again thank you everybody though for joining us today. We do host these Partner Spotlight webinars Tuesdays and Thursdays and um, Andrew, it looks like we do have one question. Is uh, Strive PCI compliant? We are PCI compliant. Um, it's called out on this particular slide, which or uh, earlier on in the deck, um, but we on a regular basis go through full PCI uh, compliance testing and get our attestation. And we have the documentation that we can provide for anyone that is interested attesting to the actual security behind the technology. Thanks. Uh, one, one. I think we have time for one more question here. We're coming up on the end of the half hour. Um, can you walk us through a typical customer implementation and integration? Absolutely. Um, when we, uh, a, a customer will tell us that they're interested in deploying the card updater technology, um, we will ask, uh, we will get a contract in place, um, which will take care of making sure that we're enabling to get their particular assets, uh, their brandable assets, including the look and feel of their website, the style guide, the card particulars, and most importantly, the bin numbers for their cards. That's all contained in a two-page intake form that the team at Strive has. Once that the customer or our partner has actually sent across that information to us, give us about 48 hours. We will have an instance, in this case, I've used Acme Bank. Um, we'll have that Acme Bank instance up and ready for your testing. Um, and once it's tested to make sure that it's up running and live with your particular look feel, we're able to send that in production. And we can typically, again, get that up running and situated in no less than two to three business days, have the conversations to get your team fully trained and up to speed on the technology, and they're good to go from there. Sorry, let me take it off mute. We have a couple more questions, if you don't mind, really quick. Um, is the solution sold in modules, pieces, or is it bundled as one product and price? It is bundled as a single service and one price associated with it with the card updater technology. And what reports are available to the FI? So we have a monthly report that comes out um, uh, usually three to four days after the close of the month that provides and that can be sent via Excel, um, a CSV or any other type of file so it can tie into your particular either rewards, CRM or other customer tracking systems that provides the metadata associated with the date and time, on, in this case for Acme Bank, of the fact that on Tuesday the 16th of March at 1.25 p.m., um, the card ending in 7948 was updated at Netflix and Walmart, and that type of metadata would be included so that the, in this case, Acme Bank would know that Andrew Toll updated one card in two spots in the afternoon of Tuesday, March the 16th, and the line items associated with all of the other card updates would be sent and presented to the credit union or, or the actual bank so that they could take appropriate action and know where their cards were placed. 
Great, Andrew, thank you again for taking the time to answer those questions. I hope we got all your questions answered. And just a reminder, Lauren did pass that link to the app in the chat window. So if you want to download that, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. If you're a Typhoon customer, feel free to reach out to your account executive and they'll be able to get those questions answered for you. And if you are a Strive customer, please feel free to reach out to them and get your questions answered by them. Thank you again for taking 30 minutes out of your day for meeting with us today and everyone have a great day. And this will a link to this webinar will be posted on our website if you are interested in viewing it again later. Take care and have a good day. Thank Thanks you so again. much. Yeah, and thank you again, Lauren and Andrew again. Thank you. Thank you.